Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. Today is Wednesday, September 6, 2006. And yesterday I had stated the market looked like it was getting a little bit overextended and it was very difficult to find good low risk ideas. And that's the, you know, that's listening to the message of the market. The market was telling us basically that there weren't a lot of good setups and to be uh, vigilant here for a pullback after it has been uh, pretty extended in here recently. So hopefully uh, it wasn't too painful for anyone in there today. But the market did come back below this prior level of resistance that we had seen in here that it, uh, you know, got above yesterday. And realistically, if you look at this market objectively, looking at this daily chart of the Qs on the screen right now, what you continue to see is a healthy uptrend. And this is just a pullback within that uptrend. Uh, we undid the last three, four days worth of uh, uptrend. However, um, let me just show you real quickly the way a typical market progresses in an uptrend. When you have the 10-day moving average above the 20-day moving average above the 50-day moving average, early on in the uptrend, it pulls back and finds support near the 10-day moving average. As the trend becomes a little bit more mature, the pullbacks get a little bit deeper. And it's not uncommon for the 10-day moving average to fail and then perhaps to see some support near the 20-day moving average. The market then resumes its strength, unless it fails, of course, and then typically will continue to rally and then come back down and find support along the rising 50-day moving average. Now, I'm operating under the assumption that this is still a bull market because we've got these moving averages aligned like that. Volume did pick up slightly today. Um, it was, you know, the biggest volume in the last three days. But last week, you know, we had the holiday and, and yesterday we saw a little bit of uh, volume again. But today it, the sellers came in and took control, at least for a day. So where does that put the market right now? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the 10 minute time frame to start out uh, or next, I guess. And as I've been pointing out, the market was extended. It had, had been making this series of higher highs and higher lows. Well, that trend was interrupted right on the open. It made a lower high and a lower low. So when we look at a one minute time frame, again, you've got to keep your eye on this VWAP, the volume weighted average price. And it broke below S1 and remained below this VWAP for the remainder of the afternoon. And that VWAP actually acted as resistance in here as well. So, you know, you've got to look at that and say the evidence was pointing towards continued lows. And where did it come to? Right down to daily S2 as far as the Qs go. Now, if we take a look at um, a trend line for on the on the uh, Qs, we'll take a look at Let's look, let's look at an hourly time frame because I want to show you one trend line that was broken here that may give us reason for a little bit more concern and maybe think that, you know, maybe it's going to be a deeper pullback that ensues. But we did break this uptrend that's been intact for approximately the last month. And, you know, breaking a trend line doesn't mean it's going to reverse. But now clearly the bears have taken control for today at least. And they're going to take at least it's going to take the bu the buyers to a, a day or two at least to recover. Well, let's see how the market can recover in here. I think we've got uh, a pretty good level of support potentially right here at about 38.20. And then, of course, just below that, we've got the uh, this level here which is approximately 37.90. So uh, overall, the market remains in a good uptrend. This 20-day moving average, let's see, that's at 38.10. So that's going to be important as well. And if you, you listen to the commentary the last couple of days, I've been hoping we would pull back a little bit, you know, get some kind of little pullback that would pause and refresh this market. The IWM, the Russell 2000, I was hoping we'd get a pullback to the 200-day moving average. I actually came down through that. And here that market for the first time is testing that rising 10-day moving average since the 10-day has been above the 20, which is above the 50. So in here, we've got a couple things telling us that perhaps we can look for uh, the market to stabilize in here a little bit. First of all, this level had been pretty good resistance, just about seventy and a, you know seventy dollars and seventy cents to seventy one. So this area should be support. We've also got that rising ten day moving average in there. And looking at a ten minute time frame on the Russell two thousand, you can see here that we've got this series of lower highs and lower lows. So for now, we want to be very defensive, maybe look for a continued pullback to the 70-50 level. Below that, let's, uh, let's let the market tell us what to do. 
However, I don't. I'm not looking for a major collapse yet. If we, uh, you know, if, if it continues to break down, then we're going to have to keep our eyes on this larger trend line of the last couple of years in the Russell 2000. Um, but that's still quite a distance away. But you know, that may come into play in the next uh, couple months or so. Let's focus on what we can trade, which is the moves of today and tomorrow and the next couple of days instead. So, all in all, the market is telling us right now that it's time to step back not be real aggressive it's not time to be real aggressive on the on the short side i think because we're still in an uptrend but we don't certainly don't want to step in front of this selling here either the semiconductors smh the semiconductors holder right here yesterday i was saying how it was positive that it's been holding above this prior level that was support in here which was acting as resistance Today we came down through that pretty hard, but again, I'm going to point to first the pullback to the 10-day moving average, then perhaps maybe we can see this market down near 32.70 or so near that uh, rising 20-day moving average. And, you know, there, there's a lot of bearish sentiment in this market, so maybe this is just going to build that bearish sentiment, and those people who are, are betting aggressively on the short side are going to get squeezed. Now, this is pretty brutal in here for the people that bought late in the day yesterday. Um, but now we've got this five-day moving average, which is turning lower, which again tells us uh, we want to maintain on the defensive. It's going to take a few days at least to turn this market. What I like to see before I decide to get long is I want to see, see this at least flatten out. So it's going to have to come down maybe a day or two, flatten out, and then turn higher. So it's going to be a couple days before I think you can safely go back to the semiconductors on the long side. And where they find support is anyone's guess right now, but I, well, let's let's see how the market handles this level near 3270. If, however, it breaks below uh, these lows, 3220, just recently, then I think we've really got to uh, question how strong this market can be and whether it can hold on to any of the gains that it's uh, uh, made uh, over the last uh, month and a half or so. The spider, we'll take a look at the SPY in here. As you know, I've been bullish looking for a target of 133 to 133 and a half. Targets don't mean you just buy and hold blindly until it gets there. It means you manage your position with stop losses. Right now, if you were long looking for that uh, as an investor, you know, here's the higher low. So this is where it makes a lower low on the daily time frame, which is down near 129. We're still at 130.50. And it's nice to see that it did close uh, um, back up here towards the, uh, you know, above well, right at this prior level of resistance in here, which was acting as support, it just just below it rather, um, and that's you know it would have been nicer to see it closing back above 13060. Getting back above there would have been nicer, but this is the type of action that a lot of times can trap short sellers in there pretty good too. I'm not calling for anything yet. All I'm saying right now is it's time to be a little bit more defensive. It's clear that the sellers came in here pretty aggressively today. They're trying to knock the prices back down. Will they be able to turn this market back lower? My guess is no, because innocent till proven guilty, because the direction of the 50-day moving average is still advancing. However, you got to be open to anything. USO, the oil trust, again, another lower low, and that's, you know, bullish for a lot of factors. But, if, you know, for the S&P 500 that are, you know, that's now very heavily weighted in oil, it'll be interesting to see if the oil stocks drag on the S&P 500 as well. Speaking of that, Halliburton finally showed some vulnerability and is starting to crack here today. So that's good to see that it got below the, this, uh, you know, 3250-ish level that's been support here recently. And, you know, hopefully we can get a quick drop down towards 30 bucks a share or so would be really nice. Uh, for the September 3250 puts that I own. And Imclone, we were short that one as well. And this one's dropping just, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And yesterday I'd suggested that uh, if you were still short from the original uh, recommendation right here at 2990, that you should lower your stop to 29.35. That never occurred. I would say now you want to start getting very aggressive on your stop and probably put your stop at about 28.65. So that would lock in approximately 
a dollar twenty-five if you get stopped out there, which on a twenty-eight dollar stock is a pretty nice little move. Uh, stocks that we were looked at last night, and again, I didn't have much conviction in the market last night. Uh, Arena symbol A R N A. I wanted to buy this above twelve twenty-three. It hit twelve twenty-three, but never traded above it today. There was no reason to get involved in this stock, and you can see that it, people who bought early quickly regretted that one and now it's broken down this support looks like it's acting as resistance it's back below that five-day moving average stock looks like trouble stay away polycom symbol plcm we we're looking to buy this one on strength as well instead of gapped lower so again it looks like trouble here it's making lower highs and lower lows now so it's time to move to the sidelines on polycom and perhaps there's more weakness to come in that stock. We'd also looked at stem cells, symbol S-T-E-M, and I had suggested buying it at current levels. Current levels were about $2.30, and I suggested a stop at $2.26. So you would have been stopped out as the stock did trade at $2.25 today, so a loss of about $0.04 cents in uh, stem. And then we had uh, XING. I told you I had bought some over in here yesterday. It closed a little bit lower than that. I got out pretty quickly because it just didn't seem like it had it. But the idea was to see the stock pull back towards 1130 and then find enough strength to make it back up above 21. Uh, I'm sorry, $11.45. I don't know why I said 21. But we were looking for a pullback to 1130 and then to show strength enough to get back above 1145 that never occurred xing instead continued to make lower highs and lower lows and again this is why you don't buy weakness buying weakness let the specialists and market makers and, and the people with uh, big you know big account you know, much bigger accounts do that the way we can do it is wait for the sellers to be shaken out make a higher high and then go with the stock so no reason to be involved in xing Whole Food Market, WFMI, we're looking at this as a potential short sale, and unfortunately it gapped down too much, so there was no trade in there. You know, had you been looking at this stock during the course of the day, um, you know, perhaps over at this area would have been a good place to sell it short. But again, I'm going to say that we didn't take a trade in Whole Foods Markets, and um you know, all in all, again, the market overall, looking at the Qs, let's just take a look real quick there at the NASDAQ 100. It's still in an uptrend today. Got a lot of people shaken up. But again, we were stopped out of most of our lungs in the last day or so. Had some uh, good exposure on the downside with Halliburton and Inclone. So the market speak, you know, the stocks speak before the market does. And it's our job that, to, to listen to the message of the market, which is why... I believe that, you know, the stocks lead the market. The market doesn't lead the stocks for the most part. And if we continue to just focus on the low risk, higher probability trades where we have what I call trend alignment, then that's where your your best opportunities are going to be found. By the way, on Friday at, uh, I believe, uh, what time? Maybe 11 Eastern, uh, I'll be doing a free seminar outlining my strategy of um, what I call trend alignment. So be sure to, to look at the website tomorrow for more information on that. I'll have a post up there with a link on how to sign up. That'll do it for now. I will be back this evening with a little bit more commentary about the market probably and uh, some stock ideas for tomorrow. So thanks for your time and uh, have a good evening.